Okay. Thank you. Uh, as I mentioned, my name is Greg Hedrick. I, uh, I'm a red teamer for a large insurance company. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> this is a pretty quick talk, but before I get started, I want to talk a little bit about uh, imposter syndrome, right? So um, Nick mentioned it in the opener that sometimes you get imposter syndrome. I have it terribly bad. Uh, in fact, I've done tons of research and I refuse to present it because I'm afraid like, oh, nobody wants to listen to what I have to say. Uh, and so I'm sitting at Wild West Hagenfest, and there's a talk on uh, a rapid deploy of red team infrastructure. And I'm like, oh, this will be good, because I've been kind of like interested in that. So I go to the talk, and the dude is talking about all the stuff that I've already done, right? And he had a room full of people. So the point is, if you're doing something, you don't think it's that cool, apparently you can fill a room with it. So feel free to, to present your research, right? So the first thing I want to point out... Uh, so one of the guys, uh, Jeff's his name, blue, at Blue Screen at Jeff, uh, works for Spectre Ops, uh, did this awesome wiki uh, called the Red Team Wiki, and he talks about how to do um, long-term Red Team infrastructure. And then there was a, uh, another guy, Rasta Mouse, who did some other stuff, but his stuff's broke right now, uh, around using Terraform to rapid deploy Red Team infrastructure. So what I'm going to really talk about um, is something kind of like this, right? So if you look, we've got redirectors and uh, like C2, so short-term C2, long-term C2. This might be DNS, um, and this is like HTTP. So the whole point is, is that when you're when you're doing a test, if you present your redirectors to your end, endpoint, right? So if you send a payload, you want to point it to your redirector so that uh, if it gets caught, you don't burn uh, your C2, your command and control infrastructure, because it's harder to deploy, right? So you got to redeploy all your tools, so on and so forth. A redirector is simply like a SOCAT uh, command, so or a um, one-liner to, to just redirect all the traffic, right? So uh, <clears throat> when, when we do our red team engagements where I work, we kind of go off of this model, right? Uh, and I am actually an operations guy at heart, uh, so I grew up uh, in IT <clears throat> as, a Linux inf uh, as a Linux administrator, and so I don't like to do things more than once. Uh, so I uh, went down and started reading about how to deploy infrastructure like devops -y style uh, for Red Team. And then, you know, I, as I said earlier, come to find out everybody else is already doing it. I was just late to the game and nobody ever wanted to talk about it. So I found this cool tool called Terraform. Um, it uses, this is just a directory listing of everything in there, right? So it uses this concept of uh, config files uh, and then this, this, this uh, tool that deploys, uh, that, that runs configs to deploy things, right? So... Just to kind of jump into it real quick, if you look at uh, <clears throat> variables.tf, right? So I define variables, right? So things like my Amazon Web Services key. I don't know if anybody can see that, <laughs> right? So your key, your your um, your API keys, uh, SSH fingerprint. That's specifically for uh, deploying infrastructure with um, DigitalOcean. <clears throat> but the whole the whole point is is that you can take you can variableize everything you want to do. Uh, and then you can you can uh, uh, rapid deploy to any cloud infrastructure, right? So they support DigitalOcean, Linode, AWS, Azure, uh, I don't know, pretty much all of them, right? If you go to Terraform's website, uh, they list all the providers that they have, right? So this concept of, uh, I guess I'll back up a minute. There's concept of providers. Uh, I'd show you those. So <clears throat> the second line down is Terraform.tfr. So I'm not going to show that because that actually has my API keys in it. But that's just where I define API keys, right? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Pipe down, Tom. <laughs> All right, so there's this concept of providers, right? Uh, in my providers.terraform file, right, I just list out which provider. So I have a provider for AWS in this case and a provider for DigitalOcean. Um, and then you, you can define your, your API keys in there. And then for the case of AWS, you define which region you want it deployed in. Uh, for DigitalOcean, you define that when you deploy the instance where you want it deployed at. So if I look at aws.tf, right, so this is a much larger config file. So I just kind of walk through this real quick, right? So I define at the top, I define which instance style I want. In this case, I'm doing a, a, a macro or a micro instance, right? Those are the, the free ones for like 700 hours uh, because this is just a redirector. Uh, so it doesn't need much horsepower. Uh, you put in your key name. So in 
AWS, you define your actual uh, public key for the SSH key pairs. In DigitalOcean, you upload your key ahead of time and then you define what the fingerprint is for that key. So you'll notice that difference when I go through this. And then uh, the next thing you need to look at really, so you can find your security groups in here and I'll show you one of those real quick. Um, but the provisioner file. So provisioners are like post deployment sorts of things. So Terraform supports like Ansible. So if you're like super DevOpsy crazy, um, you can do Ansible scripts to auto deploy crap after the fact. I'm a lot lazier than that, so I just created some, some shell scripts. So all I do with like these provisioner files is I push a shell script up, and inside a shell script I tell it to do a bunch of stuff, uh, and then here you just tell it how to log in, right? So the top half is what to do. In this case, I'm copying a file uh, with the file provisioner, and then there's a remote exec provisioner. So after I push the file up, I do the same thing again, I just deploy it at this point, right? Or I run the, the deploy script, in, and then I can show you the script either. Uh, and then the last thing is, one of the cool things is that you could have this local exec um, provisioner. And so what I actually, in this particular case, what I do is every time I deploy a host, uh, I write it to our team Slack channel. So every time uh, any one of these gets deployed at the end of the provisioner, or at the end of the, the deployment, it, it throws the host name of the device, the IP address, and what it's for in our, Slack, in our team Slack channel so we all know that something got deployed. Uh, I, like I mentioned quickly, <clears throat> There's security groups, right? So you can define in uh, DigitalOcean, your, it's your firewall in here. So you can define uh, all of your um, firewall rules or whatnot. So ingress, egress, right? So I, uh, in this case, this is a redirector. So I want traffic. In essence, I put everything in here, right? It would only be your target organization that you'd want to put in there. So traffic coming to this box and then uh, on my... On my C2 boxes, I only allow traffic from this box, so I don't get some random traffic to my command and control servers. Uh, and then this top one, right, so the variable of attacker IP, so I define in another config file where I define my API keys, I won't show you this. Uh, I define the IP address of my home system, so I can only SSH into that, right, and I do that all on the fly. It's kind of cool. Let's see, what else can I show you? Uh, in DigitalOcean, you have this concept of domains, right? So you can create uh, domains. And here I create a C name, uh, a, um, uh, a base address, and I create a C name. Uh, you can do all that based in here. Uh, I'll show you the, the DigitalOcean file, right? So it's kind of the same thing. I, I define the image that I want to deploy. I give it a name. I tell it which region, right? Obviously different than the other one. That's kind of the... The trick uh, with Terraform is every cloud provider does everything differently, so you have to kind of understand that. Uh, the size, whatever, right? So then I give it the fingerprint, and in this case, I have a different deployment script that I push to it to deploy you know, like Empire and uh, all my C2 uh, tooling, right? And then again, uh, I throw a message to Slack. Let's see. <clears throat> the last thing that's really kind of interesting, so you have this concept of outputs. So when you deploy an instance, you can define a variable for whatever comes back. So at the end of the, end of the deployment, I have it give me a local variable um, that I can use the Terraform tool for to give me the IP address. And then I can use it for other tools, or I can use it just to go look up uh, what's out there. Let's see, what else is cool in here? That's kind of the general base of it. So if you want to do a deployment, once you have your config set, deploy plan, you do plan. Um, right, so you run this command that plans it, right? And what it does is it actually goes through the config, takes all your variables, explodes them out, and builds a deployment plan based off of what, what you told it to do. And then it saves it to a file. So uh, you can kind of see everything anyway. Uh, and it saves it to this file, whatever you name the file. So now you have kind of a a snapshot of whatever this deployment was. It's just a binary file that you can deploy. So if you want to deploy it, then you just do Terraform deploy. Oh, God. Oh, apply. It's not deploy. Because why? Why would you do that? Right, so then it goes through and takes that binary file and runs the config, so you could keep it. Uh, <clears throat> so
So anyway, now what it's going to do is it's going to go through. It'll launch the instances in DigitalOcean. I don't think I have that up over here. Um, so you'll see right here. Whoop. Oh, shut up. So here it started to deploy my C2 instance. Um, EWS, it'll start doing the same thing, or AWS. All right, so now it's started to deploy my instances. And then it goes through, now it's doing the remote exec command, so it's going through and running all the uh, scripts that I told it to run. I'll show you one of those real quick. So those, uh, uh, So for the HTTP redirector, I just have it like push slight out to the box. I need to build this out a little more. Slight's a, a tool that builds uh, IP tables rules uh, based around, um, uh, it'll pull down like let's encrypt certs so you can have a full, H, a full legit cert on HTTPS redirector. Uh, and then like, oops. So then I take, like in the other one, I take like uh, trusted sex pen tester framework and then just deploy all the modules that I want it to the box. You can do a bunch of like post config stuff if you want, right? Everything you can do in a script, you can do it all automatically. I trimmed this way down uh, for this talk because uh, if you don't, sometimes it takes forever. Let's see. While we're waiting this uh, to go, are there any questions? Anybody, anybody, anybody at all? Okay, so while this is deploying, the next thing I was going to point out, so the, the gentleman that gave the talk uh, is Byte Bleeder. He works for uh, Black Hills. He actually wrote this GitHub, or has this GitHub uh, tool. It's not really a tool. It's like a collection of modules for, uh, it's called Red Baron. It's for, gosh damn it, for Terraform, right? So modules uh, in Terraform are like this, this concept of groupings, right? So you can create... Uh, a module for maybe like a C2 box, which is just a grouping of configs. Uh, so you can deploy, like only deploy C2 or only deploy your redirectors. So that way if a redirector gets caught, you can just you know, destroy your redirectors and redeploy new ones uh, automatically by pulling those output variables that I showed you earlier. So anyway, he has this already built out. So if you kind of like want to get jump started in this, he has, uh, stuff already built out for pretty much uh, all the major providers. So he's got DigitalOcean, GoDaddy, Google, Linode, Azure, AWS, and then he's got some Ansible stuff uh, thrown in there as well. Uh, so if you go, if you look, right, it's just, so here's HTTP redirectors in DigitalOcean. So he just pre-builds uh, your, uh, your variables file. <clears throat> so all you gotta do is plug in, um, your pieces, um, and then you know automatically build uh, machines for it, so on. Anyway, so he has modules, and you can build your own modules too. I didn't do that. Mine's all just kind of contained in one. But anyway, now it's uh, looks like it's installing a bunch of the PTF stuff. So when I do this live, uh, when I do this at work, uh, I usually deploy between six and eight machines. I do all the build. Uh, of all my tooling, do all my configs, any specialization we want to do as part of it, uh, build out any domains that we're going to use for, like, say, phishing or any of our C2 domains. Uh, I can build those all out in about 45 minutes uh, by doing this by the time that it goes through and updates all the boxes and whatnot. So it, it's pretty quick, but I don't actually have to touch anything. Uh, and then, like I said, if something gets caught, uh, I can, I can auto-quick build um, any of my redirectors and whatnot. I think this one's trimmed down. It should take. It should be done here shortly. I'll show you the the. So if you go to. Whoop. So if you go to Terraform, uh, I know this question came up when I've talked to other people before. So uh, here's a list of all the providers. And you can do, uh, there's specific providers for um, 
mail, you know, provisioners, but let's see, major cloud providers, right? They cover most of them. It looks like Google Cloud, Oracle Cloud. Who would use Oracle Cloud? <laughs> Azure, AWS, um, let's see, there's specific network ones, right? So you can do uh, uh, auto, auto do DNS stuff uh, based off of it. I, use, I usually use the D DNS stuff in uh, DigitalOcean. Um, let's see, oh look, they got one for pager duty if anybody wants to get paged on their equipment. Database stuff, anyway, so their documentation is pretty solid. Here's the documentation like on provisioners. Uh, and again, like I mentioned, you can use Chef. I know there's Ansible stuff out there uh, to do any post install config work that you want. Oh, it's taking forever. Anyway, I can, I'm pretty much done yammering around. So if there's any questions, I can answer them. The, uh, the only other real cool, I mean, the only other thing is when you're done, uh, with whatever your workload is, you just type Terraform destroy uh, and whatever, like the, the config that was built in the directory that you're sitting in, it will just turn down all those boxes for you uh, automatically, which is kind of handy because like I'm the type of guy that gets off on doing something else and leaves a bunch of boxes running in the cloud and then I get a big bill and people are angry. Huh? Any questions? Any, any at all? Okay, I'm done. Uh, I would hope so, right? It's pretty slick. <laughs> like, like, they probably deploy a lot more VMs than I do, so they wouldn't want to do it all at once. Oh, there we go. Now it's finished. Oh, one of them died. So I got this. One of the things, uh, one of the complaints I have is that it kind of gives you these weird timeout errors, uh, and it happens to do, uh, when, uh, every time I've gotten this error, it's something with the post install config. Um, and then when it does it, it doesn't, like the box is built, it's finished everything, but it doesn't show you the um, uh, it doesn't it doesn't show you what exactly broke, uh, and then it doesn't save any of the output um, files. So I was going to show you that real quick. Uh, I think it's Terraform output. Uh, oh man, it broke all the way. Oh, there we go. So when I deploy a box, right, this is where I was saying there's this outputs. So it dumps it to a local variable. So you can use this for other things if you wanted to. Um, I think this also comes in handy when you're doing modules. So if you, um, if you have a module for your redirectors and a module for your uh, C2 environment and you have to redeploy your redirectors, you can pull your C2 IPs from an output um, uh, an output variable so that when you redeploy them, it can automatically build all your firewall rules so that they can talk to each other. Uh, so that's, that's kind of it. And then when you're done, Terraform destroy, and it will automatically go back and turn down all your, uh, all your devices. That's it. That's all I got. <laughs>